Today you're going to learn how to get the swan to swim in a coffee cup using Photoshop. So let's get started. So we're going to start with this simple image of this coffee cup and I've also got a few images of swans. So I've got this image here and I've also got this one here. We can check which one uh, works best. But let's just start with this one here. So I'm just going to simply right click and copy this image and let's go into Photoshop and I'm simply going to paste that over. So I'm going to lower the opacity of this swan image and actually before I do that I'm just going to rename these layers. So I'm going to name the first layer by double clicking on that layer. I'm just going to name it coffee cup and I'll name this one swan. So I'm going to lower the opacity of the swan layer to maybe about just so we can see that cup right there. And now I'm going to resize this uh, swan layer. So to resize, I'm going to press Ctrl T or Command T if you're on a Mac, or you can go Edit and click Free Transform right here. So you'll get these controls. And if you hold Shift and you just drag, then, you, then you'll just resize the image. So I'm just going to drag until it gets to the right size of that um, coffee cup right here. And I'm just going to place the swan just right over that coffee cup, maybe around there. Just around the edge of it. So I'm going to hit Enter. Let's up the opacity a little bit and see what it looks like. So we can't see what it looks like just yet, but we can get an idea of, of where the swan will be. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to crop out just that circle right here and, and, and just get the um, swan just right there as well. So uh, to do this, I'm just going to hide the swan layer. So to hide the swan layer, you click on this eye icon and that's, that, that just hides it. And I'm just going to get the outline of where the coffee is. So instead of having coffee here, we want the, the water to be there. So there's an easy way of doing this instead of cropping all the way around in circles. I'm just going to draw a circle around it. So I'm just going to create a new layer by clicking on the new layer icon right here. And I'm just going to draw a new circle just like this. And that's with the selection tool right here. If you just click and hold, there's this um, circle selection tool, which is called the elliptical marquee tool. So I'm going to choose that and I just drew a circle. And I'm just going to paint this black. There we go. And I'm going to lower the opacity of this so we can see the coffee. And I'm also going to free transform this by pressing Control T or Command T. And I'm not, uh, this time I'm not going to hold shift because I actually want this to be disproportionate. I actually want this to be in the shape and oval shape of that cup. So let's just resize it just there. Push this in this way. So make sure you just get it right over those edges. Maybe you can even tilt it slightly as well. So it just needs to go right over those edges properly so we don't see any of those little brown spots and I think it looks good there so let's hit enter and I think we've got it just got it we can actually rub those bits out as well or we can just slightly move that over the edge uh, but I think we've got it so let's just hit enter and I'm gonna up the opacity of this and now I'm gonna hold control and I'm gonna click that layer icon where we created this black circle. So watch what happens when you do that. So when you hold control and when you click on that layer, it creates this selection. So it selects everything within that layer. So now I'm going to hide that layer. And now we've just got the selection of the coffee that we needed. So just that oval shape um, of the coffee. So now I'm going to reveal the swan layer. And you can see that outline. So that's the outline that we want to be that we want to keep revealed and we want to hide everything else. So instead of deleting everything else, we're going to hide it because if we just delete or erase everything around it, then we can't get it back. But if we just hide it, then we can uh, get it back if we make a mistake. So to hide all of these everything else around it, you need to keep that selection and you need to hit this um, tool or this icon called the masking tool. So the masking tool will keep the selection revealed but hide everything else that is not selected. Just like that. So now you can see that the top of the swan's head and the tail is, is cut off. So since we've uh, only just, um, we just hidden this instead of uh, deleting it, we can actually get that back by using this masking box right here. So right next to that swan layer, you can see the masking box. So to help us do this, I'm going to make an extra layer of this swan layer. So that's a swan copy right here. 
and I'm going to delete the, the masking box on this. So I'm just going to simply right click and click on delete layer mask. And I'm going to lower the opacity of the swan copy to, I would say about 40%. Uh, so just the amount that you need. So it's not too revealed, but you can still uh, see it. Um, now I'm going to go to the masking box on the swan layer, on the original swan layer. And I'm going to choose a, a white paintbrush tool. So, and I'm also going to make the paintbrush tool a little bit smaller, about that size. And I'm also going to make the hardness to be about, let's just say about 60, yeah, about, yeah, around 60%. And I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to paint right over that head, which is actually hidden. So anything that's white in this masking box here is revealed and anything that's black is hidden. So I can actually reveal the swan's head because right now it's hidden. Cool. So that looks good. And also let's do the tail now as well. So let's reveal just around that corner. So this is the advantage of using the masking tool instead of just using the eraser tool because you can just hide and reveal parts of the image. So if you delete it, it's gone. But if it's hidden, it's still there. So you can just reveal parts of the image. So let's reveal this bit as well. I think that's part of its tail. So let's zoom out and see if it looks good. Yep, I think that looks good so far. So I'm gonna hide now, I'm gonna hide the swan copy. And now you can already see this image starting to come together. So we've got a swan inside a, a coffee cup. So right now the edges of this coffee cup uh, just doesn't look like it actually fits in. So there's no like water splashing over the edges. Uh, it's just, it just looks like a cut out copy of an image on top of a coffee cup. So we need to make this a bit more realistic. So the way you do that is by finding some images of water splash. So I, find, I found these images here on pixels.com. So this is a great website to find copyright free images for your projects, for your business. And I also found uh, the coffee cup image and the swan image on this website as well. So I just went to pixels.com and searched up water splash and I found this image here. So we're going to take these kind of splashes and just apply them around these edges here. So the way you do that is by using this tool called threshold. So let me show you how to use that tool. So let's go back to pixels.com and I'm simply going to right click, copy this image and I'm just going to paste it over. So I'm also going to resize this just to the size of the coffee the coffee cup and let's just place it just there cool so it doesn't have to be, have to be perfectly accurate just just about the size of the coffee cup so uh, depends on what kind of images you're working with some images you know won't have this round effect here but if it doesn't have that round effect you can go edit um, go uh, transform and click on warp so this will actually help you kind of wrap images around a certain uh, subject so it could be like a coffee cup could be um, a car, a face, anything you want. So you can actually wrap it around a certain subject. So I'm just going to hit enter and undo that because you already kind of got that circle effect here on this image. So what I'm going to do, what I need from this image is just those white splashes. I don't really need any of these um, water images um, around there. So the way you crop out just those white splashes is with this tool called threshold. So I'm going to choose that splash. I'm just going to name this water splash layer. And I'm going to choose the water splash layer and go to image adjustments and click on threshold right here. So it just makes the image black and white. So there's no gray in this image anymore. And the more you move this image, the, this graph to the left, the more whiter it becomes. And the more you move to the right, the darker it becomes. So I'm going to keep playing around with this graph until we get that white um, image right here. So there's actually one more thing I forgot. So I'm going to cancel this. You actually need to make an extra copy of this water splash layer. So sorry, I forgot I forgot that. So I'm actually glad I made that mistake because that's actually a mistake a lot of people make because because you have to make an extra copy of the layer that you're trying to crop if you're going to use this threshold effect. So you need to make an extra copy and then make the copy the threshold. So I'll, you, you'll know why soon. So I'm going to make the copy the threshold and I'm going to find that white splash that we need and click on OK. Now I'm going to choose the magic wand tool. So if you click and hold here, you can find the magic wand tool. And I'm going to choose this white area here. 
So I'm, it's going to choose everything that's white within this layer. So now you can see why I needed an extra copy because I'm going to hide this extra copy. And now we've got the selection of just the splash from the original water splash layer. So I uh, hope that wasn't too confusing. If you have any questions, you can just comment down below. And if you, if you guys want me to make an extra video on this, I'm happy to do that. So just comment down below with any questions you, uh, you, you have. And I also have a detailed video on how to use the threshold effect on, on another video. I'll leave a link to that in the description below. So now, now all I'm going to do is just hide everything else except for the white splashes. And the way you do that is by clicking on the masking tool. So now we've got the white splashes. So now all I do is just kind of resize this and maybe you can even use the warp tool. So you can go edit, warp, and you can kind of warp it around. Just wrap it around the right edges of that coffee cup. And there you go. So now it looks much better now. So I'm just going to hit enter and I'm going to hide all of these because we don't need any of these. We only need that splash right here. So I'm just going to click on the masking tool. Choose the paintbrush and I'm going to choose a soft paintbrush or a bigger paintbrush. And let's just let's increase the flow and I'm going to just rub all of these bits out. Let me just make the paintbrush a little bit bigger so and do it quickly. There we go. So it looks much better now. And also let's just increase the hardness a little bit more and let's rub these bits out here. Cool. So I might make it a little bit smaller because I think it's a bit too big right now. There we go. I think that looks, yep, that looks a bit better. Maybe flip it around slightly. There we go. And I might reveal parts of the ocean from that water splash layer as well. So let's just zoom in a little bit, work on these slight bit details. So I need to rub these bits from the swan. Let's reveal parts of the ocean as well. So I'm going to choose the white, the white color, and I'm just going to reveal bits and pieces here and there. I might also decrease the hardness of the brush. So now it's starting to come together a little bit now. Cool. So let's get those edges around there. Thing looks much better so don't worry about the color because the color is a bit off right now we can change the color to match the color of the ocean later on so now it looks like the water is kind of splashing you can even make it slightly smaller if it's a bit too much splash let go and i'm going to flip this over and also add some splash behind it as well so i'm going to make an extra copy of this and let's just flip this over and let's just add that just there and I'm going to blur this as well. So let's just blur this quite a bit. Go filter, blur, Gaussian blur. I'm going to blur this quite a bit. So we don't want too much of that to be revealed. And let's hit OK. So I'm going to lower the opacity on this as well. And I'm going to get the swan back because right now it's covered. So let's take the... the uh, Paintbrush tool, choose black, and I'm going to lower the opacity a bit, increase the hardness. Oops, I just painted over the image. So I'm going to choose, make sure you choose the masking box because I didn't choose the masking box before. I chose the image itself and I painted on the image. So you need to choose the masking box, choose the black color if you want to hide it, or white if you want to reveal it, and just paint over it. There we go, much better. So now the swan is really starting to stand out. Oops, that's a bit too much. Cool. So now let's up the opacity on that blur. So again, this is the advantage with using the masking tool because I just deleted a bit too much around these edges. So now what I can do is just simply choose the white color and make the brush a bit smaller. And I can just reveal parts of those backs. So there we go, just like that. Cool, I think that looks much better now. So um, I can also 
maybe lower the opacity a little bit if it's a bit too much but I think that looks good enough so I also want to add some detail on this blur as well so I don't want that to be just completely blurred so if you check the blurs on the background you can see some rough edges and then just kind of kind of slightly fading away on these um, camera blurs and that's the same effect I want on this blur as well so I'm just going to get back to the original water splash layer, make an extra copy of it, and I'm just going to flip it over just like we did before. And I'm just going to place it just around there where we placed the blurred splash. There we go. And I'm also going to lower the opacity on that. So I'm not going to do too much to this extra layer. And just like before, I'm going to uh, hide parts of it so we can reveal the swan again. Let's hide. Just this, these bits, and all of these bits here as well. Yep, that looks good. And let's see what this looks like. So you just need to keep playing around with this until you kind of get that detail that you want. And that's kind of almost there. Maybe we can um, add a little bit more detail in there, or is it too much? Yeah, I think that's about it there. Yeah, I think that looks good enough. And just need to still play around with these bits here like the colors are still a bit off and we will be changing that soon but I just want these kind of rough edges just there to be kind of slowly fading out there because I think it's a bit too um, harshly revealed there so lower the uh, brush opacity and just make it slightly fade out okay so I think that looks good there so now let's start changing the colors up so it kind of looks similar to the ocean so the way you do that is by choosing the selective color tool. So you have to do each of these splashes one by one. So choose the original splash layer, the water splash layer, and go to image, adjustments, and there's so many um, color changing um, gradients here that you can play with. There's one called selective color or replace color. So let me show you selective color. So I can't go, all, um, go over all of these in one video. I'll probably make a, a video on that soon, but uh, you just need to choose each one and just play around with it. But one of my favorite one is called selective color. And you can choose um, which color you want to change. So right here under colors, if you want to change the blues in this image, you can choose that. So I'm gonna, I want to change the, the light blues on this image. So I'll choose that. And I just start playing around with this graph now. So now you can see it's starting to blend in. So I want, it to, I want to make it slightly darker to kind of match that dark color there. So there we go, a little bit too dark there. It's a bit too light there. Too much purple now. And maybe now you can also choose the blues. You can play around with that also. So let's just make it slightly lighter instead of darker if it's not getting dark enough. There we go. So I think that looks pretty good there. Or you can also choose neutrals and it just changes everything in this color. So this will definitely make it more darker. So now you can see the blues coming out a little bit. Now you can see the dark blues coming out a bit more. We'll make it even darker. There we go. So now it's much better. You can play around. Maybe it's a bit too blue for you around some edges. You can play around with that also. Cool. So that looks much more realistic now as well. So let's push it a little bit further this way maybe. There we go. Okay. And what you can do also is keep that same layer chosen and you can go to image adjustments and you can play with the contrast as well so right, right here under brightness and contrast if you decrease the contrast it makes it a bit darker you can increase the contrast which also just lets it kind of blend in into the um, uh, coffee cup as well that looks good so let's hit ok and what, well, I might also change the colors of the, the background as well so you need to do each of these one by one. So I'm going to choose adjustments, selective color. Maybe I'm just going to jump straight to neutrals this time. And I'll just play around with the colors there. So you can hardly see the changes on this one because the opacity is quite lowered. So maybe you can't change this one much. Maybe you can change the water uh, the other the other layer that we created. So image adjustments, selective color. There we go. So now you can change this quite a bit. So maybe I might make this slightly darker or maybe a bit wider so it kind of blends in to the background. Yeah, that looks much better now. Let's hit OK. 
yeah, so I'm actually quite happy with that. So there's just a few more things that we need to do. We also need to kind of blur this bit here. I noticed that's kind of a bit too revealed or a bit too detailed there. And we're also going to change the color of the entire image so it all kind of blends in together. And so let me show you what I mean. So let's first just fix this part here. So we're just going to reveal parts of this blurred image that we created before. So let's just choose the masking box. Let's choose a white color and choose a paintbrush tool. And I'm just going to simply reveal more of the blurred image right here. So it doesn't matter if you if you go over this one a little bit, we can just rub that bit out soon. And we can make it a little bit bigger so all of these bits kind of nicely flow into it. There we go. And let's reveal parts of the swan back now. So let's choose a black color. Let's also make the brush a bit smaller. Yep, about that size and also make the brush a bit harder. So now we can reveal that swan. And maybe reveal the swan's face a bit and the beak. Cool, I think that looks a lot better now. So it's nicely kind of blending in into the background. So now we've got a nice looking image. It's really nicely placed on top of this coffee cup. So if, um, what we had before was this to this. So it's doing, uh, it looks really good now. So now what we need to do is kind of blend in this image and the coffee cup image as well. It already looks pretty good, but we can make it even better. So to do that, we're gonna use some of these tools here. So this is similar to what we had under image and adjustments, but it's just right here. So you can change the entire image instead of just parts of the image. So if you choose this little circle icon, there's like a little circle icon with the um, half circle uh, filled in and there's all the all of these options here. So again, I'm not going to go all of these options There's just far too many, but we're going to play around with a few of this. So let's start with brightness and contrast So let's lower the brightness or maybe make it a bit brighter. Yeah, that looks pretty good So you can just play around with it see which works better. Maybe increase the contrast a bit and Decrease it see which one works better as well Yep, that looks pretty good so I'm going to keep that there and let's click on another one. Uh, maybe this time we'll play with hue and saturation. So this one just changes the color completely on the, the photos. So you can play around with maybe, so that's a bit too much. You can make it a bit darker as well. And you can choose some options here. You can maybe change the yellows on this image, the greens on this image. And if you don't like it, you can simply just hide it and maybe try something else like selective color. So this one, let's just choose neutrals and let's just change the color on everything. So maybe you want to make it more blue or more green. You can do that as well. Slightly more green there. Maybe you want to make it slightly more pinkish. Yep, that looks pretty good to me. Um, and then maybe we can also add some gradient maps on there too. Well, no, maybe we don't want that. Maybe we can add some curves in there. So curves are quite fun to play with. It's like a graph. And you can just pick a point on this curve and maybe you can make it slightly lighter or maybe slightly darker. Make it, make it pick another curve and you can play around with that also. Cool, that looks good now. So the, the entire image kind of blends in nicely. So before the image looked like this, now it looks like this. So it's a bit more brightened up. So if you have any questions uh, about how to, uh, if, if any parts you were confused about, you can just uh, comment down below with any questions you have. But that's it for this video and I'll see you in the next one.